This is a demonstration on how to join a bottom-up seamless raglan sleeves and body into the yoke. Specifically, this is Kira K Designs, which is me, Essential Cropped Cardi. I've knit my body and my sleeves up to the armhole, and I'm going to do the round that joins them together. So on the instructions, this is raglan yoke instruction number one. I've already knit from the beginning of my row through the front stitches. Previously I bound off for the armhole and I have my sleeve knit to a similar place also bound off for the armhole. So I am now going to place a marker. This is one of my raglan markers that sort of delineates the difference between the body and the sleeves. And I'm going to knit onto my main needle, right hand needle. The left one I'm just tucking out of the way because I'm going to knit the stitches off of one of my sleeves. And on this row, I'm switching my stitch pattern, so I'm going to just check in where I am on that and continue working my stitch pattern, which in this case is double moss stitch. Now, the main thing to know when you're doing this is you have all of the stitches that go around the bicep of a sleeve, and they have to squish into the bound off area that you have created for the armhole, sort of fitting sideways between the front and the back of the body. So it's going to be squished. It will feel better after about four or five round rows, but for the beginning it's going to feel like it's super duper jam packed in. So don't worry about that. That is just the nature of knitting a three-dimensional object. Sometimes it feels really squished in there. So I'm about halfway done. I've got a double point needle I'm going to put aside because I'm done with it now. Continue on to the next one. And the nice thing about this, even though it's a little confusing sometimes at the beginning, is that when it is done, even this first row, it's going to start looking like a sweater as opposed to a few different oddly shaped pieces that you can't quite imagine how they fit on the body. So. Alright, so here I am. I am finishing up the sleeve stitches. It might feel a little loose at the end because you might have a loose yarn tail there from before. Don't worry too much about it. And now that I've done this piece, I need to rejoin it to the back of the body. So this whole sleeve is squishing into this tiny little spot that I've bound off. So keep them all bunched up super tight on your needle. You need another marker. And these raglan markers are sort of showing where it changes from body to sleeve and then back now from sleeve to body. We'll have two more later on as we do the other sleeve. So again, keep these sleeve stitches really, really bunched up here. It'll make it a little bit more comfortable as you go, but don't worry that it's a little uncomfortable. It will get better as we do a few more rounds. my stitch pattern just if you're not familiar with the sweater pattern that I'm talking about the essential cropped cardi which at this point is the same as the essential cardigan this part is the same it is a double moss stitch so I am alternating knit stitches and purl stitches as I go along so as this gets to the point where I can slide these stitches down onto my circular needle, I just want to slide the sleeve stitches as one group. And you can see here, this is going to be the sleeve where I can insert my arm into the cardigan eventually later on. So I'm going to go kind of at my normal knitting speed to get to the end of the back stitches. Don't feel bad if it's not your normal knitting speed, just um. Pause me if you need to catch up. Incidentally, I'm knitting now in my um, default style, which is has different names. So the yarn's on my left hand. It's sometimes called continental style, although it's not specific to the continent of Europe. So I am trying to teach myself to not use that word. Um, often it's called picking rather than throwing with the right hand where you stop and move the yarn around. But um, 
if you're feeling like this is really crazy fast, it might be that I'm just holding the yarn in my opposite hand than you do, and that definitely does speed things up. So I'm just going to pause here because I felt a little funny stitch. There we go, fixed. I'm making more mistakes just because I know people are watching <clears throat> or will be watching someday but um, I also think that's good to know that even somebody who's done a lot of knitting and is a designer and a teacher and all that still makes mistakes the uh, difference is that they don't slow me down too much and I don't freak out when they happen I just pause fix it and move on I think that's actually the goal to work forward to as opposed to not making any mistakes so I'm getting towards the end of my stitches for my back and I can tell because there's this big old gap on the needle where I bound off earlier. Right, now that I'm done the stitches for the back, I'm going to put another marker on my needle. I'm going to take my stitches for my second sleeve. And I am making sure that I keep the right sides together so I know that this is the right side of my body because I've marked it. I know that this is the right side of my sleeve because it's on the outside. I'm going to make sure that those things are together as I keep going here. And right now it looks like there are a lot of needles in play. The opposite end of my circular needle I'm just going to tuck out of the way. And the opposite end of my double point needle I might just move or I might know that it's there and ignore it. I'm getting ready to check into my pattern. Next it should be a pearl. Eventually, I'm going to start decreasing at these raglan markers, and with this particular pattern, or pattern, since it's true for both the essential crop cardi and the essential cardigan, the decreases are a little different based on whether on the body or the sleeves. So I suggest making a chart so you can keep track, and that's written in the pattern. It gives you a sample chart even for one of the sizes so that you have an idea of how you might keep track just so that it's easy and you don't have to think too hard about where you are. Right, so one of my double pointed needles is empty. I still have more sleeve stitches, so I'm going to continue. Again, if you're watching this as you do it, feel free to pause me if you need a chance to catch up. I do knit on the fast side. And that is many years of experience and also just a personal natural tendency towards efficiency. I do a lot of things fast. So, and again here, this might feel loose because there's a loose yarn tail attached. Don't worry too much. Tuck on the tail. It'll be fine. I'm going to put my final raglan marker here to show the border between this sleeve and then this second sweater front. So here's the end of my circular needle that I had knit the body on. I'm going to check on my pattern. First stitch here should be a knit. Keep these all bunched up just like before.
and then I'll we'll keep these bunched up when I push them off, I'm going to push them all off together. It feels much more comfortable if you're able to do that. Got my marker that indicates my cable band, so I'm going to switch my stitch pattern to be the cable band pattern for this row. So at this point, I have six different markers, four raglan markers that show the difference between the body and the sleeves, and then two markers that show where we change from the cable band to the rest of the sweater. And then, turn this around a little bit, you can see here I've got my sweater front, my sleeve is kind of hanging out. There's a big armpit hole, that's fine. This is gonna get sewn up later on and I do have a different video for the finishing of this particular pattern. But now I've joined my body and my yoke and I'm ready to knit up for the rest of the yoke and do my raglan decreases and my neckline decreases. <laughs> 